So, thank you so much. Uh, this is the last lecture. And I'll try to make it as fun and light as possible. It's also a little bit delayed. So I'll make it short. In any case, this is a talk about tropical sand piles as artificial models for life. And of course, the uh, uh, sand piles was already covered on the last lecture. And now there is in three words tropical. And uh, this is John with Nikita Kalini, Aldo Guzman, uh, Julia Prieto, Michel Skolnikov, and Vera Kalini. Uh, and from all of us, she's the only professional biologist. So uh, she's uh, she related to Kalini. <laughs> uh, they are uh, yeah, married. Okay. Okay. Uh, in any case, uh, I'll repeat this thing that I said in my first lecture. Uh, there is this concept of scale invariance in complex systems. Uh, and this is kind of a signature, this is kind of a, a tell that something that you are studying is one of these complex systems. Uh, so, uh, the, the most archetypal example. So, there is this concept of scale invariance that tells you that something is a complex system. And the archetypical example for me. Uh, it's a very early example. It's a very beautiful. It's called Sips Lois. Unbelievable. But literally unbelievable. But, uh, you get a long text. The longer the better, of course. But it has to be a real text. Wikipedia, for example. In the past, it was impossible. But this was discovered. You have to understand that uh, you couldn't just get. Uh, an API and not and ask Wikipedia to count the words. You couldn't do this kind of thing. You know? have to count the words. You know? So uh, now you can verify this for extremely long text. And uh, in every language this happens. And what do you do? You take a text and you uh, count the You list all the words that appear on the text in a dictionary first. Now you uh, count how many times A appeared, how many times you count, how many times the second words appear, how many times the third words appear. And now you change the order of the dictionary, not by alphabetical order, but by rank of the words. So the word the is the most used word in the English language. So you, there's a first rank of the word. And then there's the second, third, of is somewhere here, is the fifth word in the English language or something. And then that or is already the fiftieth word in the English language, and really, really let's say two hundred words in the English language, and so on and so forth. In this long text. And now you want to know well, what is the shape of this law, you know, the, the most used word is used how much more than the second most word? And how much more than the fiftieth uh, word? That appears in, your, in the dictionary of your book. And it is, um, it is very surprising. It's what is called by simple. And this, this can be variants of this linguistic. Simple was a linguist, a mathematician, a physicist. And, uh, but Benoit Ma uh, Mandelbrot understood the fractal nature of this law. And it comes from this fractal nature of language that you have these three English language. Now the grammar of the language is this tree-like structure, and it's a fractal structure. So Mandelbrot understood this, and this has to do with the fractal dimension of this fractal. But in any case, what you see is you count the words, you see the rank, this is the most used word in the English language, the second most used word in the English language, so, 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 so. And the words are almost never used. You write them, but now it's extremely important that you take so you say, if I take the, you count the probability, I take a random word on the book, on the Quixote, on which page, what is the probability that this word will be the? You compute this probability, it's about 10%. It a random word in, in Wikipedia, the probability that is the word the is 10%, it's a very high probability, it's a very used word. But then, uh, other words don't have as high probability. 
And it's very important that you take not the probability, but the logarithm of the probability. And you take here not the rankine of the world, but the logarithm of the rankine of the world. And now you get a straight line. And this tells you that there is this scale invariance, this, this, uh, but a remarkable fact is that about half of the words in El Quixote are used only once in the entire book. Excuse me, uh -huh. so what is the value of this law? Is it universal for the language or for the, it depends on the book or not? There is this universality. So and it is the, 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 is, is, uh, the value of the slope of this, uh, uh, why is this uh, constant? For, for each book and for every language? Yes, I know, of course. It oscillates a little bit, you know, depending on the book. But it's very close to a univer an ideal universal value. And what is this value? I don't remember. It's negative, of course. It's negative. I don't remember 1.2, I don't remember something like 1.2. But I may be lying. So it's a scaling law. And uh, again, the fact is that about half of the words in the book appear only once in the book. So, take the book and erase the word that that everywhere. You can still pretty much read the book. You didn't lose too much information. So, uh, the word uh, that doesn't carry a lot of information. It carries some information, to be sure. But there's few languages that don't really have these words. So, you can live without it. But it's very used, and it's a a tell that doesn't carry too much information is that it's very used. But you have this extremely uncommon word, and this carries a lot of weight. Uh, so, make this experiment. I, 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 in information theory lectures that I gave, I made this experiment, and people cannot believe it, but it's totally true. There is this a theory of the. Uh, in, uh, when you're go, going through the internet, you leave a lot of pieces of information around. And there is this theory that people have developed called differential privacy. That is the art of anonymizing the information because it's extremely easy to reverse engineer your identity. Extremely easy to reverse engineer your identity. But the reason why, why this problem is essentially impossible to solve, it's impossible to make anonymous your trail of information on the internet, is this. The reason is that uh, it's a power law distribution of information that you are spreading around, and then the uh, very li little things that you live around totally clue you in, into what person you are talking about, but totally. So, take the following example. Open, entirely identify a book by two sentences. It's, uh, it's, ex it's, an ex it's, ex it's an extreme distribution. So this is the law, unbelievable law uh, of uh, linguistics. I would see the develop this year to referential attachment, etc. But no satisfactory of it. this law exists as of today. There's theories, even sees the theory of referential attachment. No, no theory, no linguistic theory seems to explain this satisfactory. I have to say. Uh, so, and, but it's already language is a complex system. But of course, mammals. Each one of them, but also all mammals are a complex system. And I tell you that this is the fact is the metabolic rate of animals. You see, there's people that have higher metabolic rates, people that have lower metabolic rates. But then there is animals that have higher metabolic rates and animals that have lower metabolic rates. They are not equivalent, and this has to do with a conversation we were having the other day about the fact that uh, a German was saying that you could be just 10 meters tall and Someone was telling me, but your shape should change very much. He's right. You cannot expect to be just a human that is 10 times larger. And this will be important for what I'm going to say later today. So, uh, but, but again, you have this log, log, straight line, scale invariant distribution. Here is the elephant, and here is the mouse. And uh, this is the body mass, and this is the metabolic rate in watts. And well, it is scaling law, you know, it's not having a linear relation of your metabolic rate and your mass. And that's why you cannot just make a huge mouth, like in the movies, and expect it to live. It will die. So, so you have this scaling law for the animals, the main mammals, for example. And in the lecture yesterday. Why do function? Huh? Play a role here. 
there is a, 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 a minimization principle that controls this picture. But this is secret. But you, this minimization principle is this defined by you. No. No? Oh, okay, so like, are you saying that there is a possibility to create an algorithm that out of nowhere, without having access to the literature existed in English, for instance, you just give it random words and it just self-organizes sentences without comparison to the literature, right? Some principle, yes. Is that so? Uh, but, but, let me say it in another way. I want to study in life. And this is, this has forever been very possible. Who designed a pine tree or a hummingbird? Why a hummingbird violates law and the second law of thermodynamics? How easy is it? These are physical systems that locally violate the second law of thermodynamics and additionally seem to be designed. Okay, not. No design. Come. And of course, it can, cannot possibly violate the laws of physics. It's a physical system, and even more a thermodynamical system. But it violates locally the second law of thermodynamics. This was the contents of my last two talks. So I tried to explain all these issues carefully during my last two talks. The laws of thermodynamics are conceived out do not follow from classical mechanics. That's right, statistical mechanics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, but of course, globally, the, it doesn't violate it just locally that it's violating. It's globally? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and yes, and the reason is information theory. Yeah. Look, so, I'm trying to. Okay. You, you didn't come to the last two lectures, so. Yeah. <laughs> The reason, for instance, the mouse has yeah. become as big as an elephant mm -hmm. is in fact what you just said. It, it violates the laws of thermodynamics, probably some energy function of the not be yeah. 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 But when you work with algorithms, unless you fix that energy, and you tell the program, even if the program 100 random words, you would need to first, the human needs to tell the computer, this is the model, look at Shakespeare's work. That Shakespeare has an energy, not energy of this random combination of words, need to be close to that. So then program learns that from now on I'm gonna write the sentences like Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. Is this what you're saying? Or is this this even this regime you're saying without knowing anything about the book of Shakespeare? A computer can eventually figure out to write that Shakespeare. Yes. Wow. Yeah. What I am saying <laughs> what I am saying is that. You will write some good things. But Shakespeare is Shakespeare and Nabokov is Nabokov. It will find good regions of the sign space. But we cannot really control which regions of the sign space it will access. So it won't be Shakespeare. It will be a new person. It happens every day. There's new writers writing great books. Uh, a new new avenues of design space are being accessed all the time. Can, I, can we control this thing is, is to go to Shakespeare? That you would have to do some training, etc. But this is not what we want to do. We want, we were, in the first talk I explained our model for the origin of life, and today I'm going to explain our ideas about what morphogenesis should look like. So. Uh, but if we are not, we are not doing this, uh, this uh, like in neural networks that you do this back propagation to optimize certain potential that of course is put by some, some objective function that you put there. No. Perbach's discovery was very different. Where you put just some local laws that seem extremely trivial and it's totally unexpected. This is the organization of the global object. And think of this as a flower. So the metaphor for today's talk is, how does a flower manage to be a flower? Well, of course natural selection and all that, but somewhere there should be the solution to the problem of flying. If somewhere is the solution to the problem of flying, and convergent evolution has, a, has found this, the idea of having wings. 
mammals in bats and uh, reptiles in birds and insects in hummingbirds uh, and all sorts of these species have fa found the solution to the problem of flying and nobody put the potential for this extremely complex natural selection process that is reality itself forcing the new avenues into the science space as Jack Dunn then it would happen. And this is a flower that we found out of. But then there is the other question how does a flower manage? I mean, it sounds so difficult to make a flower. And the answer we are proposing, but we are not the only ones proposing this answer. And many people have suspected this even since Turing, ever since Turing, is that there is these very simple rules that I explained yesterday, one of these very simple rules. But you say, oh, this is so simple. Perhaps then we get a flower. So from extremely simple local rules, somehow solutions to global problems are there. And so what we're saying is that there is this mystery that the Kolmogorov of complexity of these solutions is very low. This is the mystery. There is these avenues in the science space with very low Kolmogorov complexity. Of course, as we know, the determination of Kolmogorov complexity is an undecidable problem. So, there is this R <laughs> in the process provided by natural selection. Okay, pair back again, wonder, is, is the human brain something like a sun, right? And it, it sounds ridiculous, I thought, come on, pair back, are you really, are you really saying that this tri trivial model has anything to do with the brain. But surprisingly, the metaphor is extremely productive. And there's these people in, in, the, in, in some much like institutes in physiology and self-organization institutes uh, and in other places having ideas, even today, that seem to verify that yes, the brain is a little bit like the sun, by you know, the findings of the neurons. You can think of them as this kind of cellular automaton that qualitatively behaves like a sample model, self-organized criticality, and, it, and this criticality regime is extremely important for the brain to be thinking, and it looks very different when you are asleep, and even more different when you are alive, dead, you know. And, and this signature of self-organization is literally the, the definition of a living brain. And of course there is subtleties, you know, here at where the level of self-organization is, no, 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 it's, so critical, but, and all these things are wrong. But it's surprising they're still working with Perbach's pattern of the abelian sample model. And yesterday I explained why it's called an abelian sample. I explained this optimization problem that secretly the sample is solving to get into this self organized critical state. And uh, I explained those things yesterday. But today I want to say something that I should have said yesterday, but I didn't quite say. And it's not surprisingly, this thing, these things, these fractal pictures form a group. And this is very surprising. And this is what discovery of a physicist done. So, uh, so remember you have this pile of sand, and then you have this little grain of sand, and a little avalanche, and then sometimes just adding a little grain of sand, gives you a humongous earthquake. And you have these little avalanches, and then this, think of it as the crust of the earth being perturbed, and then you have these earthquakes, and every day you have these little tremors that you don't even feel. That kind of thing. This is your intuition. And uh, so you are keep adding these grains of sand to have constant perturbations into your system. Now, imagine that I start with this table, no sand. And I put a grain, a grain, a grain, a grain. I have infinite grain on my back. Put a grain, a grain, a grain. I just keep putting grains of sand. Sometimes one and then another, and I just keep putting grains of sand. And of course, some of these pictures, for example, the seal picture, it won't appear except in the beginning. It will appear with probability zero in the long run. But some pictures will appear with positive probability, and some other pictures will appear, and it's all or nothing. Either the positive probability or zero. And in fact, every state that appears with a positive probability 
but built with the same pro pro long term probability. By the way, these configurations of sun, so some configurations of sun appear all the time in this story. I just keep up in sun forever. Then all the time some configurations appear because of finite system. And some configurations appear never after a while. Well, the ones that keep appearing and appearing and appearing are called the recurrent configurations. And the, one, and the other ones, non recurrent configurations. Well, forget the configurations that were accidents of the beginning of your system. And just take the ones that keep appearing over and over and over. That discovered that they form a group. A group? Well, how do I have a group operation? I put a configuration of some, I have another recurrent configuration, I put it on top, and I relax. So the group operation is very complicated. It's not just addition, it's addition and relaxation. So it's a very complicated group operation. To even compute the addition of two states takes a long time. You have to solve this, uh, this harmonic equation. So you have to solve this harmonic equation. And, not, and then uh, this, is this, this forms a group. Astonishingly, it forms a group. The sample group. And now let's say, this is this got me good. It's the only theory of which I know that the identity of the group is extremely hard to compute. Uh, you know, the first thing that you say is, oh the identity is zero, 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 zero. I am to any configuration and to this is the same. Not so fast. Problem is zero, 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 zero. It's not a recurrent configuration. Is there a recurrent configuration that I put on top of everyone, I relax, and I get the exact configuration that I used to have? First square thing, of course. Well, here it is. It's a group. It has an identity. And this is it. Unbelievable. It's a fact. Of course, I didn't draw the true identity. I drew an, appro I drew an approximation to the identity. And we already have an open problem of the theory. You'll be famous if you prove that this square is there. Uh, we know nothing. We can see, but we don't even have a sense to prove that the limit exists. Because, of course, I have to take the limit over the smaller and smaller squares. I have to take the limit over smaller and smaller grains of sand. Uh, and so we we'll get this beautiful picture. And I found this unbelievable. This is the, this is zero. This is, this is the most complicated zero I've seen in my life. <laughs> this is zero. It's an abelian. It's unbelievable. So this is the most complicated nothing that I've seen in my life. And uh, things like this are going to be our models for living systems, for living beings. So, if we zoom in, it won't be easy to see because of the light. But you get these triangles here. You get these thin lines inside the triangle. And is it a group huh? or is it the same group? It's a group. So in terms of these operations, what is the inverse? Well, if this is the identity, you get the idea. The inverse is complicated. Whatever configuration that is in the <laughs> uh, so uh, semi group, it, it will be not relaxing, it will be just adding. We have this relaxation process that minimizes the, en the energy. So, but, so is it a theorem that it's a group or it's, it's a theorem? theorem. It's a theorem. Yeah. So, what, is, what was the conjecture uh, about the identity? But the identity looks like this. I mean, what does it mean looks like this? But there are these triangles there. What is the structure of this? The identity is oh, okay. so even though we know that it's a group, we don't really know what this is. Okay. Yeah. So especially the scaling the scale, yeah. because there is a scaling node. Square root of x. There's a scaling node. So in the scaling limits. Now, if you see you see this line, and you see these thin lines, and then you see thin lines on a triangle. CP2 complex projected space, holomorphic curves. These sample nodes, you can see them here, about holomorphic curves on complex projective space. So, there, 
already appear all sorts of holomorphic curves on complex relative space. In fact, all of them. Let's see. So let's let, let's see how this goes. So now we're going to have a little space and the story, of course. The thing is that you have to do this rescaling, in which you have the sound particles, the smaller squares and the smaller squares and the smaller squares, and then you do this big zoom and you start seeing these holomorphic curves on relative space. So what is going on? We want to know what's going on. How is that, that this model for life can solve this partial differential equation? The Cauchy equation. Well, we hope that this really has been taken seriously as a model for morphogenesis. And this is the problem of, you know, when you have a cell it divides into two identical cells, four identical cells, eight identical cells. And all of a sudden, a cell decides to be a bone cell, and a cell decides to be a heart cell, and take this shape. How does it pull it off? How, from identical cells, all of a sudden, it decides to grow a tail? There's a problem that Turing studied brilliantly. But he studied with partial differential equations. And from my first talk, where I studied from the point of view of John von Neumann, of cellular automata. So, uh, so this is an example that we put in this paper. They managed to reverse engineer, and this they program as a pilot. They managed to reverse engineer the closest they could to a lab. Here you have the head, and here you have the wings, and here you have the shape of the larvae, and here you have the cross sections of the larvae. And they could get pretty good speed with the with my logical models of larvae. But this is saying something. This is not the solution to the problem. Larvae is very complex. But it's saying something. It could be that DNA encodes. I explained that the chemical kinetics is a universal Turing machine. It could be that DNA encodes these very simple local rules, and that's it. And this is an idea, it's a non trivial idea for, for genesis. Is, is it possible that DNA encodes these little cellular automaton laws that will form a wing, that will form an arm, etc.? And, uh, and uh, our friend Phil uh, Smell uh, is from Geneva. He uh, has this, pa uh, this paper in Nature uh, where he does write. Has this paper in Nature, where he does write one of these local rules set the automaton for the scale of a reptile, and it extremely fits reality extremely well. Scaling of what? A reptile. Ah, a reptile. And he does, and he reverses in the years in a certain sense the complexity of the skin of the reptile into this same person of the automaton local rule. And this is another example. We are some, but he doesn't give us a out of kind. But this is a sample trying to model a larvae. So this is the question. Yeah. It's conceivable that the solution to this mystery is that the DNA encodes computationally these local simple rules that are enough to form this complexity. Because somehow it's a because that, it chooses parts of very low number of complexity, which evolution it should be able to pick out. Okay, so what is tropical geometry? Well, in this room, I don't have fortunately to explain what is tropical geometry. There is experts in this room that know far more than me about tropical geometry. So I will not say much about it except that, for the people that are on Zoom, that if you have these complex algebraic curves of relative space and you have these three hyperplane vessels, uh, once you choose coordinates, you pick these three hyperplane vessels. Then, uh, well, you can draw the curve in log log coordinates, absolute value of the complex variables, and then you'll get the so called amoebas. And if you take the base of the logarithm and you make it grow very, very, very much, then these amoebas will tend to these drawings that will be a combinatorial shadow of your complex geometry called your tropical deterioration. And, uh, well, you can write this kind of thing. Tropicalization of uh, polynomials and 
curves. You know this thing, I don't have to say much here. Uh, and uh, another audience, I will have to explain it a little bit more, but not here. And now you have the tropical sun plant discovered by Mishkol uh, and Kalim, Kalim and Mishkol. You have the tropical sun plant. What is the tropical sun plant? It's beautiful, it's kind of solving this Roman Britain problem. You give it. So you, this is P1 cross P1. Square. One, the image of the moment map of P1 cross P1. The square. And you pick points, any points on the square. And it just, the sun pile computes a homomorphic curve passing through the point, through those points. Just computes. The sun pile just computes the homomorphic curve passing through those points. So, could you play it? Ha, hello, hello, hello. 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 Yes. Hello. 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 The number of points. Do you know from the beginning? Let's repeat from the beginning, sorry. So you then you saw one point, put one point, this is the image of the number map. You put a point and then the sound by instantaneously sending waves all over the place, computes a curve that typically gets one more genus for every point you have into the sun. So you put this sun, three, 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 three grains of sun. You put a, any pole, the rational pole, top, then you start putting the grains of sun, and you just compute the sun pack relaxes, and it relaxes into a tropical curve passing through those points. It is beautiful. So what can we watch? We're missing the music because there is nice music associated to this video. Carefully chosen by Nikita. But I can send the YouTube link. So you see all these waves. You, you, if you put the points in simultaneously, you see this wave of propagation, you know, solitons moving around, and finally stabilizing in the final state that we proved yesterday is unique uh, and minimizes energy. And it just stabilizes. It's the last little wave coming about. And then you put that. But you, you, know, you, you can do this magic that you have this gene just by asking to pass through one more point. The curve is tropical. So basically, you put the extra sand on the nose, right? Yeah. That's how, and then it flows. Yeah, it just flows. You put the sand, and the sand pile computes the tropical curve. Amazing. So you're in the middle of that and beautiful. And then I ask you a question. This is the circle. You put a point in the circle. And it doesn't care that it is a rational polytone. It could be a circle. It could be any convex region. Yes? Um, the reason you get this holomorphic curve on the surface at least must have something that the stability of these is similar to stability of the world universe, like at least three points on the genus zero component. Do you have such a thing for the sand pile model? Well, we have this modular space and this is a part of the modular space. It's on the table. It's on the table. I don't know. I won't go into the drum. It's, but it really it is an optimization argument. It is an optimization argument. Sure. When you add the sand at one of these points, mm -hmm. you produce something called a wave operator. What, what principle tells you now it needs to flow? So, some kind of degree of that point needs to go up. Probably you try to decrease it by sending it to the other vertices. Mm -hmm. So, this is the avalanche. This is the avalanche. And you can see the size of the avalanche. And we care about the size of the avalanche. So, the thing is that Riemann surfaces of very high genus are unlike Riemann surfaces of low genus because they are alive. They are a complex system with self-organized criticality. So as, as the modular space gets larger in genus, 
it becomes a self-organized critical system. Yeah. It's beautiful from the circle, it's absolutely beautiful. Okay, so that story. Uh, let's move to the next. Okay, so, uh, but uh, how much time do I have? I think I don't have time to explain. 25 minutes. I have 25 minutes. Oh, perfect. So I have a little bit of time to explain a couple of things. Uh, so, uh, yesterday we explained that there is this function that controls the sample relaxation. And uh, this function. The real state of the sample plus the Laplacian of this function gives you the final state of the sample. We explained this yesterday. So you have this. And uh, well, then uh, we also showed yesterday that there is this inequality. The initial state plus the Laplacian of this less than or equal to 3. And then if you take the space of all functions that satisfy just inequality, but they are just functions. You don't know a priori that they are their function that solves your problem. Here is the minimization principle. Uh, here is the minimization principle. The their function that solves the problem is the smallest function that satisfies this inequality, and this is the least action principle that the sample is solving. And from this least uh, action principle, we can deduce that this is what is happening with this tropical sample. So, what is the tropical sample? The tropical sample is you have the table and you have three grains of sand at every point. It's a maximal stable configuration. Because you know that whenever you put a grain of sand, something will happen. So three, 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 three. And now you're going to, this is what we saw in the video. Now you're going to start putting grains of sand. So you put the coordinates of the grains of sand that you're going to add here, it is set P. And now you take these delta functions in these points, and you take the, the, the state, 3, throws this delta function. And now we want to find AH, so that this plus the gradient of AH is less than or equal to 3, at least the smallest H that does this. That's what we want to do. And we want to show that H is the, the tropicalization of a polynomial. We want to show that H is the tropicalization of a polynomial. So, uh, uh, well, uh, the, top, the toppling function, in general, if it wasn't this sand pattern, if it was just any sand pattern, we know that the toppling function, the A, that we are looking for is called the toppling function. The minimizing for this inequality is called the toppling function. We know that this function is piecewise quadratic. It's a beautiful observation. But for this sample, Kalinian scholar could prove that this function is piecewise linear. And so, you get the radical curves. So, one considers the family of functions, and then now you take any complex region, it can be a round table or anything else. So you take the, any complex region, and you take the space of function at this wise linear with integral slopes, not negative or omega and zero at its boundary, concave, and not smaller at every point, pi or p. So at every point, you ask the space of functions that are not smaller at those points. And you take the space of functions. Uh, and you take the pointwise minimum of this space of functions, and then it will show that this is, that this is the minimum that satisfies this inequality for the gradient. And then we finish, because if you state by definition, it is more trivial. So if we, if we show that these two functions are the same, we are done. Right? So, uh, uh, so the lemma is that in the scaling, but of course, this is not literal. For a finite sample. In the scaling limit, this is literally true. So, uh, a sketch of the problem. Well, what we do in our paper is we introduce these wave operators that are already appear in the physics literature, of course. In fact, they were even called PQ brains by people in the cell theory, uh, this kind of thing. And uh, so, uh, but we have this beautiful expression of the wave operator in terms of the 
sound by theory. And it's just like say, in terms of the operations of the sound by uh, uh, with, uh, with these probing operators and then relaxation of the sound by and, uh, and and we know that uh, the relaxation we, we can show that the relaxation is just an interaction. And that's what we saw in the video. We saw these solitons moving like this, these waves going about. And this is what this is saying. Like you, you, you have these operators repeatedly. Then, <laughs> but what I mean at the, at the level of the potential, is you're moving these planes, optimizing this kind of linear problem, optimization problem. But you move these planes and then this is what you're seeing with the curve. Uh, and, uh, well, uh, so you have the first important property of the wave operation uh, is that you can achieve the final state by wave operators. And the second important property of the wave operator is that uh, this is very important, that it can be interpreted in terms of tropical geometry. And this is the moment where it links to tropical geometry. At this moment, very good. So the operator on the one hand has this sample interpretation, but it also has a, a tropical interpretation. It also has a tropical interpretation that I lost. Well, I don't know. Uh, ah, well, this is a this is a omega tropical series. In fact, these curves won't be algebraic or analytic. Uh, these tropical curves will not be linear, of course. For the whole circle, you have no hope. Right? Uh, and of course, uh, understanding this curve very well for the circle could imply the Riemann hypothesis, of course, this kind of thing. Uh, but, uh, uh, but there is this, uh, there is this, inter uh, there is this tropical interpretation. I get this. Uh, tropical geometry. GP, the operator GP that is applied beep, 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 as many times as you can. There is a repeated application of this wave operator. That is what, one of the things that happens when you put the sun. This increases the coefficient of the of the of the piecewise function, uh, moving the plane on, until you touch the point. Because you see the shell, you see this function here, convex function. There is the point, you added a point, so you put the plane and then you move it until you touch the point, and that's why you see that finally you get the curve that touches the point. Well, uh, so uh, if you apply this operator to the state zero, all these wave operators, one after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other as many times as you can you get the solution to the harmonic problem, to the harmonic optimization problem, and you get the toppling function, and you get the final state. But this shows that the final state is a toppling curve. So that's the argument. Uh, so we have shown that the toppling function is piecewise linear. Uh, so the supply equation to obtain that, the relaxation is what to do anywhere, but the locus, where the function, the gradient function is not zero, the corner locus. And omega tropical curve. And this is how we show that this, uh, the final state of the sample is going to be a tropical curve passing through the points. Uh, and so this is what we already saw in the video. But we want to interpret the points that you chose as the DNA, as the genital, and the curve that you take as the animal, the feminine. So you have the points of the DNA, the genotype, and the curve is the femtype. Uh, so, uh, so you want to program Mickey Mouse, you have to know where to put the DNA in order to obtain the Mickey Mouse or whatever. Uh, so this is what we say here. This is the phenotype of the system. The circle we already saw, it's a very beautiful example. I won't go into the It's a world example. Here is the effect of one wave operator and one grain of sand. Uh, and this is the, the this is the function, this is the this is the, 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 the toppling function. This is the number of times that every point topple in the sample dynamics. And you can see that the toppling function is a piece of function. Satisfying the, the functional 
relations that we described. So this is a top-line function, and it's a beautiful piecewise linear function, giving you this unbelievably beautiful tropical curve. And this gave a new formula to, for pi. Uh, it gives you a new formula for pi, taken over a sector of S to Z, and it's a beautiful structure. Uh, uh, but, but now, you say, well, the problem of doing this integral is, believe it or not, running the cellular automaton, running the sun, it's very slow. Very slow. Now, you want to do a lot of experiments of what's going on at the very high genius modular spaces or things like that. It's very slow. So, we wrote an algorithm that was the first. A continuous algorithm exhibiting self organized criticality, or it's very fast. It's a continuous algorithm. And it's this kind of linear problem kind of algorithm. Uh, so now we do, we say, well, we can solve this without running the sample, we can move this place and write this in terms of linear programming algorithm. So we can write this algorithm without running the sample just doing tropical geometry and writing an algorithm in tropical geometry. And this will be a very fast algorithm. To get the, the, the curve from the points? Yeah, but not only that. What we care about, remember, it's a little bit different that in what people in pure mathematics think. We care about how difficult it is to get there. The size of the average. So that's what we care about. We know we can get there, we know where it is. We, we care about the difficulty in getting there. Uh, so that's what we care about. And we write this tropical algorithm that's traveling in the space. And, uh, well, here you have this extremely high genius curve. So this is when you can see this, when it's very high genius. When it's low genius, you see nothing, what I'm going to talk about. Nothing, you see nothing. It, it, it really, you have to be, be in the regions of the modular space where the genius is very large. And uh, when you start seeing, you know, just these tropical curves start uh, inheriting the structures from the sun type group. But now remember, it's a purely tropical algorithm, it has nothing to do with sun parts anymore. It has nothing to do with sun parts anymore. But you see, it starts mimicking the structure of the so it's a fast algorithm. So it's a reasonable algorithm to try to, st to study morphogenesis and artificial models of life. And lo and behold, this is the sun and the classical bareback calculation. And this is our calculation. It was long. Uh, this was super we reproduced this with much more resolution than bareback in 1987. So we ran it on the supercomputer for a long time. We got this beautiful curve. And we ran this on a supercomputer as well. And nothing to do with sand pipes anymore. Just a tropical dynamical algorithm reproduces the results. So now we have self organized criticality in algebraic geometry. But now this is fast to compute. You no know, longer have to do the, doing the cellular automaton. And, uh, well, I will just say that now you can start asking many questions about. Evolution, you can put evolutionary pressure in these models, etc. etc. Work in progress at my lab. I showed you the picture of the lab in the first talk. And, uh, well, I just want to leave you with some beautiful pictures. This one is called Leonardo. This one is called Gottitlan. Because, for two reasons. Uh, uh, Aldo Guzman from IBM was wrong in the thing, and this takes a long time to produce the video. So, even on Aldo's supercomputer, it takes a long time to produce. So, Aldo Guzman wrote the algorithm, right? run it, I think, in C, literally in C, uh, because you want it to run really fast. And so I was in Teotihuacan, Clan, what happened? When he, he, he said, text me, oh, it came out you know, on the computer. Send it, send it, I say, very excited, let's just send it, you know. When he sends it into my, I felt like double seven, but it's an important information. So he sends me, he sends it, see it on my phone. And I was in Tetitlan, in Tetitlan they make these beautiful carpets, 
the Hamptons geometrical patterns, uh, very fine carpets, and they use this famous cochinilla in La Israel. Uh, and it's a long story. This cochinilla was the only way to produce the authentic red for a long time, coming from Oaxaca. And it was used by the British Army for the uniforms and this kind of thing. So it was, it's waiting up. It was an extremely important uh, thing for a long time. Product from New Spain in Mexico. And uh, so I saw these carpets with this red cochinilla and I said, as he said that thing to me in blue and said, no, 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 no. you gotta do it in red. But this is the church when you have the metrics. And I cochinilla. And they would call it the Teotitlan state of the Teotitlan fractal. In honor to the to the art of the Teotitlan, the people from Teotitlan that do these beautiful carpets with cochinilla. And this was paper was published in August 28, 2018, and it made it to the cover of the, of the journal, so we were very proud to see our Teotitlan fractal on the cover of the, of the magazine. And that's it. Thank you very much. I should get multiple stable configurations, right? Because if, if the principle is that this is going to give me the allowable J-holomorphic curves inside P1, P1 that also count the gram obtained invariance, I should get multiple stable configurations, right? No, uh, you will get one because this is, I said something yesterday. It depends on a particular lattice that we fix. And now we haven't studied the we haven't studied the problem of burying the lattice. Once you bury the lattice, then you, we would be in the situation you described. Okay. But this was not our intention. We don't bury the lattice. We don't bury the lattice. But okay, but then on the screen you should get one. We get one once we fix the lattice. Uh, ah, but and it, it solves a minimization problem, and it's the only one that solves a minimization problem once you fix the lattice. But uh, I have to say that uh, this was not our intention. We were, we were concerned about the problem of how difficult are these transitions in humans, how difficult it is to cross these walls, you know, how hard is, uh, uh, and so this is where the self of the next criticality in modular space appears. But only in medical genes. You don't see this in genes, three genes for you. I in genes. 10,000 to start seeing the story. Uh, it's really to see uh, this only in very high genes. Really high genes. So you had this configuration for sent files and they form this sent file group. Mm -hmm. So you also have some group uh, here uh, when you want to do this. Uh, I don't know if it's a meaningful question. Mm -hmm. It is a meaningful question. I would say no, but frankly, I'm not exactly sure. But I don't see them, but I, I'm not exactly sure. Sorry, I don't know. Okay. So, I think it would be very easy to put that number. I may be wrong. Yes. <laughs> One is like a new passenger. Yes. Okay. Um, I would like to see in terms of the, uh, in terms of the machines, mm -hmm. what would mean uh, self documentation? For instance, it seems that uh, at least this uh, machine should not stop. They should be non non -calcum. But then, uh, if, for instance, if we have uh, some frozen computer where the software that is, uh, goes in, in the loop, so is this a uh, artificial life form? Not exactly. So, in terms of Turing machine, what would mean several of these machines? My requirements for artificial life, I, I wrote in this, in this paper that I'm about to bring out, and I talk about them in the first talk. So I have some requirements for artificial life to be artificial life, but people will disagree on this, of course, on these definitions. I give one definition. 
Uh, so, a loop that just goes on and on. Uh, carries very little information and you want to have some behavior uh, I gave a very precise definition very quickly last time well two terms of entropy I want them to be quasi-periodic and the other one to be strictly decreasing so I give this very technical for me I'm sorry, sorry question well, I get, I get the state of the Turing machine and I can compute its some information function in any computational model. Well, I don't know in any computational model. On a single automaton model of a universal Turing machine, I can compute these information contents and see the revolution in time. And that's what I care about. But, but, uh, and I don't think what you propose would pass my test. Be alive, but it's just my test. It's just I, I argue that it's a reasonable test, but of course this is not no longer mathematics, it's philosophy or something. So, in the story of stable curves, mm -hmm. this uh, thing that uh, stability criteria the concept is defined, which I think you borrowed from Feynman diagrams and physics, mm -hmm. kind of forces these, for instance, for genus zero tells you that this dual graph associated with the curve becomes a trivalent curve. Mm -hmm. So you've got like a tree and so on, and then if it's higher genus, you exactly know how the graph looks like. So in here, kind of a lot of similarity happens, but I think it has to do with this criteria that you find on the degree of, of maximum possible degree of the vertices. You even showed that in the energy that you define over every vertex, you have this three. Mm -hmm. And then it, it exceeds three kind of it needs to be stabilized until it becomes three. Mm -hmm. So very similar. Mm -hmm. Where is three coming from from the sand pile point of view? Where is that three coming from? What is the significance of three? The significance of the three is that yeah. is it more general? Yesterday, but not very much. But I could take any graph that represents your space. You know, so you have this discrete model of space, and this discrete uh, Thank you. 